What's up, YouTube friends? I'm in a very good mood today because it's the most wonderful time of the year. No, I'm not talking about Christmas. That's overrated. It's Halloween. Not only does October have my favorite holiday, it's also my birthday on the 26th. Mark it on your calendar. Yep, it's true. I'm one of them Scorpios. But today, I'm pretty excited to share with you the treat bags I'm doing this Halloween for the kids. And they're right here. I'll be doing four different faces, but you could just pick one and run with it. They're really easy, really fast, and I'll show you what a spooktacular good time they are to whip up next. So the things you're going to need to make these treat bags are one piece of outside fabric that measures 5 inches by 14 inches. Now I'll be doing four different patterns. A pumpkin, Frankenstein's monster, a ghost, and a vampire. You're going to need a piece of lining fabric that also measures 5 inches by 14 inches. For the faces of our little monsters on our bag, you're going to need a scrap piece of black fabric and some heat and bond. And today I'll be using the no sew kind. It's my favorite. You're also going to need some quarter inch ribbon. Today I just have the satin kind. And finally you're going to need your face templates. Like I said, I have a ghost, Frankenstein's monster, a vampire, and a pumpkin. And if I can get my printer to work, I'll leave a PDF down below of these ones right here. If you don't like my faces, you could just go to Google and print out whatever you want. They have thousands and thousands of patterns. I'll also be using my iron and ironing board and sewing machine with matching thread. Today I'll just be using black. So let's get started. First thing I did was hit up Google. I found the faces that I wanted to do. I glued it to some cardboard and cut out my stencils. Then you want to take your scrap piece of black fabric. If it does have a face, you want to put that face down and grab a chunk of heat and bond. Now this has a really rough glue side. There's no way to confuse this. I'm going to set the glue side down and iron. The manufacturer's instructions it suggests two seconds on each spot until it's all the way covered. And then you just want to let this cool. So now I'm just going to grab my face templates and I'm going to trace them onto my heat and bond. And just to save some heat and bond, I like to place these together so there's very little gap in between. And since I'm doing four, I'm going to do that to all four of my stencils. Just like that. I'm not sure how well you can see that on camera. And now with my applique scissors, you could just use regular scissors, but these tiny ones do help with the nooks and crannies. You just want to cut them out. So for the rest of this video, I'll just stick with the pumpkin. So I got one pumpkin face cut out. So now you just want to set these off to the side and make sure you don't lose them. So now you just want to grab your outside piece for your bag and I'm going to lay it so that the right side is facing up if it has one. I'm going to take my lining piece. I'm going to lay it on top with the right side facing down. And now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine and on both of the short sides, I'm going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Right, so I'm over here at the sewing machine. Today I'll be using a straight stitch and my length is a 2.5. So I'm going to back stitch in the beginning. And just keep sewing. Don't forget to back stitch at the end, and I'm going to do that to both of my short sides. So now I'm just going to open it up like this, and I'm going to press one seam towards the lining.
I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to press the other seam towards the outside fabric. So in my case, the orange. So now I'm just going to line up my seams so that they nest just like that. And press. Next, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to start right here on the seam and I'm going to measure over one inch from the seam on the orange side first and I'm going to make a mark. I'm going to do it at the top and at the bottom. So now I just flipped it around and I'm going to do the same thing on the lining side. I'm going to come an inch from the seam and make a mark. Now ideally you would want to use a disappearing marker or something like that, but if you don't have one, a pencil will work just fine. However, if you're doing the white or the green, let's say, your pencil will show through. So just do a really light line. You could also just use chalk. Now I'm going to take this back over to my sewing machine and I'm going to start right here at the bottom. I'm going to backstitch and I'm going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance until I get to my pencil mark and backstitch. I'm going to lift my presser foot. I'm going to move my project down until I get to this next line. Backstitch and sew the rest of the way down, backstitching at the end. And I'm going to do that on both sides. All right, guys, so I'm still using that same quarter inch seam allowance and the same stitch length. So I'm going to backstitch. And I'm going to sew up till I get to my first line here. And like I said, I went a little heavy on the pencil mark. And it is going to be able to show through to the other side. But I'm just going to stick that on the back. And I'll probably give this one to Carson. He won't even care. Alright, so I backstitch. I'm going to raise my presser foot and just move my project down to the next line and backstitch and continue to sew. And backstitch. So now I'm just going to flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. So now I'm just going to open up my bag and I'm going to turn it right side out. The chopstick is very helpful now. So now I'm just going to take this back over to my ironing board and give it a press. And right here where our little opening is, you just want to tuck in those raw edges just like that and press on both sides. Now that I have it nice and pressed, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to tuck my lining down into the bag. Now you want to make sure that your raw edges are still tucked in there nicely. Now if your sewing was pretty good and you stopped right on that pencil mark, which sometimes I don't, your lining and your outside should line up pretty well. And then I'm just going to take this back over to the sewing machine and give it a good press. All right, so I have it nice and pressed. And I just like to do one flap at a time. So I'll do like the back flap, make sure it's lined up, flip it around, and then do this other flap. So now I'm just going to take this back over to my sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch. So the first top stitch I'm going to do is I'm going to come down about an inch. I think I lined it up on my sewing machine at the 7th, 8th mark. I'm going to back stitch and stitch across the bottom here on this first flap. I'm going to do that to both sides and then I'm going to do a top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the top back stitching at the beginning all the way to the end and back stitch and that's going to form the casing for our drawstring. Like I said I'm going to do that to both of my flaps. See you at the sewing machine. So I'm going to kind of open up my bag like that. It's probably a little hard to see on camera but to make sure that this side is nice and flat. 
I'm going to line up this edge with the 7 8 mark on my sewing machine. And I'm going to backstitch. And then just sew. So when I get to this end, I'm making sure that this side is nice and flat. So I'm going to do that to both sides. Just like that. And now before I top stitch the top, I'm going to take a scrap piece of fabric. I'm just going to grab the skeletons because it is Halloween. And I'm just going to sew. Just like that. Nothing fancy. Then I'm going to take my bag and I'm going to line it up so that it's an eighth inch away from my needle. And this little piece of fabric is just going to help me pull this through. Right here it is our seam and it's doubled up because it is folded. So your machine might have a little trouble grabbing that and getting it through. So this is going to help. Now there is a name for this but I totally forgot what it's called. So backstitch. And if you need to just pull on this fabric if you need help going through. Backstitch at the end. So I'm just going to clip my little fabric off. Sew it again and do the other side. Now you might think that this little piece of fabric really isn't that helpful, but it really does help keep from right here getting a big ball or a knot of thread. No one wants that. So now onto the fun part, putting on the face. I forgot to mention when I was cutting these out, if you have any of these bigger pieces of the heat and bond on your fabric, save these. These come in really handy. All I do is just throw them in a bag and save them for another project. So here are my face pieces. Now Heat and Bond has a piece of paper on the back that you're going to remove to expose the glue side. Now I'm going to come up an inch, about an inch, I'm going to eyeball it from the bottom of my bag. And now I'm just going to put the eyes and nose where I think it looks good. If you want you can grab your stencil just to make sure that your eyes and nose and mouth are lined up the way you wanted it. But I think if each bag's a little different, it just gives it personality. All right, so that looks good to me. You're going to grab your hot iron. I'm going to lay it over here for 8 to 10 seconds. Then I'm just going to flip it around to the back and just to make sure it's nice and stuck. I like to press it from the back too. So now I'm just going to grab my quarter inch ribbon. I'm going to cut a yard piece off. And then I'm just going to cut that in half so I have two 18 inch pieces. Just like that. Now I'm just going to grab a safety pin. I'm going to stick it in one end of my ribbon. And then I'm just going to thread it through my bag. So as you can see, I have both ends coming out one side of the bag. And then I'm just going to tie a knot. Just like that. 
Now I'm going to grab my pinking shears and just nip the end. And that's just going to keep it from fraying. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my other ribbon, but going the opposite way. So now I'm going to start at this end. Now the final thing to do is fill it up with candy and deliver it to your little monsters. And here are the other ones that I made. I still have to put the ribbon in them, but I think they turned out great. Now I think this will be a perfect project to do if you're babysitting or for the scouts, whether it be Girl Scouts or the Boy Scouts. And instead of getting all fancy like this, you could, but if you want to simplify it, just stick with the pumpkin. I would just whip up a whole bunch of the bags. Then I'd fuse the heat and bond to my black fabric. I'd cut them out into about four and a half by four inch rectangles, just so they fit on here. Let the kids draw their own faces, cut them out, and iron them on. And if you have littler kids, just skip the heat and bond altogether, grab some felt, and glue sticks. They could cut out their own faces and glue them on. I found out that it really doesn't matter what they're doing as long as they're crafting and having fun. They really don't care. Now I use the no sew heat and bond just to make this fast and easy. But if you wanted to be really ambitious, you could go ahead and satin stitch all the way around that just to make it look nice and pretty. But you're going to want to do that before you sew your bags together. So to do that, I would just grab my piece of fabric just like this, fold it in half, do a crease, and then measure up one inch from that crease, put your face, and then satin stitch around it. But I wanted this to be fast and easy. I have about 20 of these to make. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video and want to see more of my videos, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you'd like to be notified when I post a video, hit that bell notification button. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Subscribe over at Patreon at Scrappy's Patch if you'd like to support this channel. For as little as $1 a month, we'll keep these videos coming. Friend me over on Facebook and Twitter if you'd like to share crafting ideas and pictures. I'd love to see the projects you guys are doing. If you'd just like to leave a tip or a donation to support this channel, I have a PayPal link down below. Feel free to share this video across the social medias. And as always, thanks for watching. Happy Halloween. And I'll see you next time.